All cities have a garbage disposal system in place to maintain clean and hygienic living conditions. Similarly, all living organisms use some kind of a mechanism to eject wastes from their bodies. In this lesson, we will take a closer look at the waste disposal strategies used by various organisms. This lesson is about the process of excretion in different types of organisms. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Describe the importance of the excretion process Describe the structure of the excretory system in human beings Describe how the excretory system in a human works List important functions of the kidneys Describe the process of dialysis and describe how the process of excretion takes place in plants. All living organisms consume food to obtain nutrients and energy. The food is broken down into simpler molecules by the process of metabolism. These metabolic reactions create nitrogenous materials that are not required for the cells of the body and may even harm the body if they are not removed quickly. The process involved in the removal of these harmful metabolic wastes from the body is called excretion. Different organisms use different strategies for the process of excretion. Unicellular organisms such as amoeba remove wastes by simple diffusion from the body surface into the surrounding water. Multicellular organisms such as flatworms use specialized organs to perform the same function. Higher plants eliminate gases and excess water through the stomata on the surface of leaves. Human beings have a specialized excretory system for the removal of metabolic wastes. In addition to excretion, it also maintains salt, water and body fluid balance. This regulatory mechanism is called homeostasis. The excretory system in human beings includes a pair of kidneys, a pair of ureters, a urinary bladder and a urethra. This is referred to as the urinary system. Now, let's find out the location of the kidneys. The kidneys are located in the abdomen, one on either side of the backbone. The kidneys perform several crucial functions. For example, they excrete water, salts and urea in the form of urine. They control the amount of water in the blood. The kidneys maintain the level of body fluids in the blood by regulating the salt concentration. If this did not happen, then the osmosis or movement of water between body cells and blood would be hampered. Kidneys maintain the blood pH at 7.4. Each kidney is divided into two distinct regions, an inner medulla and an outer cortex. The cortex forms a shell around the medulla. The medulla is composed of conical masses of tissue that leads to the pelvis. The cortex has a random arrangement of tiny tubules called nephrons, which are the functional units of the kidney.
Each kidney contains about 1 million nephrons. Each nephron consists of a corpuscle and a renal tubule. A corpuscle is composed of tangled clusters of tiny blood capillaries called glomerulus. This is called the filtration unit. A thin walled sac like structure called Bowman's capsule surrounds the glomerulus. The inner layer of Bowman's capsule covers the glomerulus and the outer layer is continuous with the inner layer and with the wall of the renal tubule. The renal tubule leads away from the Bowman's capsule and becomes highly coiled to form the proximal convoluted tubule. The tubule makes a hairpin loop called the loop of Henle and joins the distal convoluted tubule. The distal convoluted tubule opens into a collecting duct which passes into the renal medulla. Two ureters carry urine from the renal medulla to the bladder. Each ureter is about 10 to 12 inches long. The bladder is muscular and bulges when urine enters it and contracts when urine passes through. Two sphincter muscles are located where the bladder and the urethra meet to prevent the reverse flow of urine into the ureters. The urethra carries urine to the outside of the body. The urethra emerges through the penis in males and close to the vagina in females. Thus, the excretory path in kidneys begins in the corpuscles and moves through the proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, collecting duct, ureter, urinary bladder, urethra, and finally ends at the penis or vagina. Waste products in the body are transported by the blood to the kidneys through the renal arteries. Unwanted wastes and toxic products such as urea, uric acid, hydrogen and potassium ions are left behind in the kidneys. These excretory products are removed by nephrons in the form of liquid called urine. The kidney performs three functions leading to urine formation. Ultrafiltration, selective reabsorption and tubular secretion. Nephrons filter minerals, wastes and water but retain red cells, proteins and large molecules. This process is known as ultrafiltration. The filtered blood is returned to the body through the veins. Some substances in the initial filtrate such as glucose, amino acids, salts and a major amount of water are selectively reabsorbed as the urine flows along the tube. Further absorption of nitrogen compounds takes place through the hairpin loop and the distal convoluted tubule. Further substances not required by the body may be secreted into the filtrate by cells of the nephron before it leaves the kidney. Next, the urine is poured into the collecting duct. Then the urine flows from the medulla into the pelvis of each kidney. Finally, through the ureter, urine is drained into the bladder. The bladder is muscular so it can expand to store the urine until it is disposed of. The muscles in the bladder 
make it open up automatically in babies when the bladder is half full. Adults can control these muscles. An adult bladder can hold about 800 milliliters of urine. In a normal healthy adult, the initial filtrate in the kidneys is about 180 liters per day. However, the volume actually excreted is only a liter or two a day because the remaining filtrate is reabsorbed into the kidney tubules. When factors like infections, injury, or restricted blood flow affect the functions of kidneys, it leads to the accumulation of poisonous wastes in the body. If not detected on time, these accumulated wastes can lead to death. For people with an injured kidney, an external artificial kidney can be used to remove nitrogenous waste products from the blood. The process of externally purifying the blood is called dialysis. An artificial kidney contains a number of tubes with a semi-permeable lining suspended in a tank filled with dialyzing fluid. This fluid has the same osmotic pressure as blood except that it is devoid of nitrogenous wastes. The patient's blood is passed through these tubes. During this passage, the waste products from the blood pass into the dialyzing fluid through diffusion. The purified blood is pumped back into the patient. The actions performed here are similar to the functions of a kidney except that there is no reabsorption. Compared to animals, plants use completely different strategies for excreting waste material. These techniques differ from plant to plant. During photosynthesis, plants release oxygen as a waste product and during respiration, they release carbon dioxide. Plants get rid of excess water through transpiration. Many plant waste products are stored in the vacuoles of cells. Waste products may be stored in leaves that fall off. They may also be stored as raisins and gum, especially in old xylem. Other wastes include dead plant tissues like cork. Plants also excrete some waste substances into the soil around them.